Now, you know, occasionally I see an article, I see a news story that I already know up one side and down the other. But I see it, and it makes me ashamed that I haven't covered it more and discussed it more and talked about what the final destination is, what the end game is of all the apparent deindustrialization and sabotage and, and, and corruption, where the establishment will go way out of its way to do something corrupt and evil instead of doing something good. Where are they leading us in this scorched earth policy? What is our destination? Where is the world government taking us? And I saw this article, we've, we've linked it up on Infowars.com from the Daily Mail. And it gives a headline out here, whistleblower, teacher, make shocking claim that most are autistic. That's the headline. You say, well, most of what? And it goes on to say that basically mentally retarded or brain damaged children who don't even know who they are are being taught in the public schools that if you're a boy, you're a girl, and if you're a girl, you're a boy. Why? Because under Cold Springs Harbor eugenics in this country, in the Royal Academy in England, and under the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute under Hitler, anyone that is seen as mentally defect must be sterilized. But it's not fashionable to sterilize the mentally retarded or the mentally feeble, as the Nazis called it, those with bad racial hygiene. And so what you do is you just say, oh, we're teaching the Down syndrome children and the autistic children that they're really another sex. And then isn't it cute? They don't go to the Special Olympics. They just get their genitals cut off. But it's so cool. It's like a class thing. And that's really what this is. But you see, there's a bigger issue here than that, 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 that dwarfs it by multi-levels. Why if you go to the CDC's own numbers in 1960, about one in 33,000 had autism spectrum disorders. The last numbers that came out in 2015 for the United States, the numbers are similar for Canada, show one in 58. We are the leaders in the world in autism spectrum disorders, except for one country, South Korea. What does South Korea do to a level even higher than us? Well, they do a couple things. They use even more Roundup glyphosate on their crops, their biggest crop being soybeans. And they take more vaccines than anybody else. And they have more screen time than anybody else. This is important stuff. This is everything we ever talked about now writ large, all of it being confirmed daily. Because we're now in the thick of 2018, about to go in 2019. We're in the future. It's happening. And boy, let me tell you, the globalists, they kept their promises on what they were going to do to us and the type of world government they were going to build. But... There's a big old fat, juicy fly in the ointment, and his name's Donald J. Trump. And there's a couple other big old fat, juicy flies called nationalism and populism and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the right to keep and bear arms and free speech and just red-blooded instinct and info wars and our great audience and all the other constellation of wonderful people out there, too numerous to mention, but Matt Drudge and Tucker Carlson and you. You know, I've got all this exclusive video that two of our reporters shot in the last five days in San Diego there at the border crossing with the caravan slamming in. That's coming up. Joe Biggs, who sent the tweet on Friday to Swalwell, Swalliswell, the, the Democrat, the darling, when he said it, we're going to confiscate all your, 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 your semi-autos. And if you don't turn them in, we're going to nuke you. He really said that. So Joe Biggs is going to join us start of the next hour as well. And we've got all this news. There's so much of it. But I was sitting there on Friday night doing research. And then I came into the office 
Saturday morning, and I saw Greg Reese in here and some of the other crew, and they called me over and they said, have you seen these findings? And I said, yes, I saw those findings 20 plus years ago, and I'd forgotten this. Even though I made a film called America Destroyed by Design in 97 that actually predicted it, but I didn't predict it. They said they were going to do it. It's like saying they're going to have Shakespeare in the park at a local park, and you read it a month before in the newspaper, and then I predict Shakespeare in the park on whatever date is going to be there, and you go, you tell your girlfriend, look, I'm really psychic, baby. They're having Shakespeare in the park. And she's like, no, you read it in the newspaper. And that's what's so frustrating is there are newspapers and then there are globalist publications where they communicate with each other and act like we're a bunch of dumb animals and thought that what we said or did would never matter. That was their undoing where they admit the whole plan. And I'm sitting here simply going, wow, look at their plan. You know, they've got the search for extraterrestrial life. This is an allegory, a, 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 a parallel. I'm not getting into aliens or whether they exist or not, but you know, they're beaming with lasers out to deep space into other solar systems. Here we are. We're, there's six and a half billion, seven billion of us. It's six and a half billion. They sent the signals out, and this is what we do, and here's our language, and here we are, and here's how we operate. Who knows if they're nice? Who knows if they're bad? The people sending out the messages are kind of projecting on what's out there what they think is going to come back. They're projecting their own selves onto that or maybe they have a death wish i don't know it, it remains to be seen but if you were sending a message out and you got a message back that you could decode how it'll take them 20 light years to get here but when they get here here's the weapons they're going to use and they're going to destroy the planet you might mount some defense against it And so that's what's frustrating to me is we're not facing aliens from outer space or from some interstellar region. We're facing elite humans, and by elite I mean who are in control, who have taken on the mantle of total social engineers and who have decided the general public is worthless crap and who have a planetary program to cut off resources, consolidate control, release bioweapons that are... attenuated and dialed back to put us into a position of circling the wagons before the real bioweapons come in and before we're just re removed from the face of the earth. Because the establishment has made the decision since the days of Ian Fleming with OSS and MI6 writing books about it like Moonraker. He wrote that in the late 50s and made it into a movie in the early 80s where the global government elite are going to release a bioweapon to knock out 99% of the population so they can come back and take it all over and build a Garden of Eden. You're like, well, that's Moonraker. But you see, this is their real plan. And now the universities say we need to post a human world and it's going to be a great thing. And, you know, thank God for airborne Ebola. You see it now all over. What I covered decades ago has become old news. It's become passe. And so that's what I'm trying to get people to look at and to think about and to understand is that there's a whole nother dimension to this where there were people that came up with equations that were proven to be accurate in the 1890s that were later turned into atomic weapons in the Manhattan Project. So if 1890s equations created atomic weapons and atomic power and then hydrogen power and hydrogen weapons. What has come after that? Well, antimatter, fission, fusion, we know. And it's been leaked as a message to the Chinese and others. And don't worry, they're over there building it themselves. We could be destroyed like that if one of these reactors goes sideways. They get a strange lit or a fission fusion reaction or a cyclotronic explosion uh, or a superconducting, super colliding uh, black hole creation. There are thousands of possible permutations with mathematical equations that have been proven doctrinally in the third dimension to be absolutely real, not theory. An atomic bomb dropping on your city and vaporizing you is not theorem once it's tested. And so 
we stand at the precipice of godlike power and we're more savage and more corrupt and more petulant and more evil than we've ever been. And then I look at the numbers. One in 33,000 had autism in the 1960s. One in 58 has it in North America. It's even worse in South Korea. No breast cancer to speak of in Brazil. 23 years ago, glyphosate is introduced. Their breast cancer rate is as high as ours now. Glyphosate grows breast tumors. And I could give you a thousand other points and a thousand beyond that. And then I have an article here that, again, I don't just believe this article, this huge 22-page report. I know it's true because I've read the Tavistock Institute documents and I know the plan. Up to a third of the children are now mentally retarded or autistic. Theory of thermodynamics that we've lost in many cases. Or the idea of a constitutional republic. It was a big debate 30 years ago. And a big debate 20 years ago. By major firefighting associations and the Bureau of Land Management, the National Forest Service and state governments and Texas is one of the few states that said, we're not going to comply with federal land management. Plus, Texas only has a few percentage points of its land being federal, places like Big Ben. We're less than 10%. Some states like Utah are almost 90%. And so here's the bottom line. Trump comes out in the last few weeks as California burns the worst fires in its modern history and says you're supposed to have fire mitigation programs that stop that. And so the media at press conferences said, was all over the news, said, look at this idiot. What's he talking about? He's blaming firefighters. He said, yeah, you got to rake the brush. You got to cut it. You got to have gaps. Now, all Trump was saying is what the National Firefighting Association, the National Logging Association, and others for 30 years have been saying, until 30 years ago, under George Herbert Walker Bush is when this started, he signed on to the UNESCO UN Wildlands Treaty. We're going to show you that treaty in a moment and the maps of it. Everywhere in the world, not just here, but in ancient Africa and Native Americans. You, have you ever driven around in the countryside anywhere and see old houses, old churches? And they've got like a one or two foot mound of rocks around them. You go, what does that keep out? Why do they have those walls like a hump? Whether you're in Africa or whether you are in Spain, or whether you are in Japan, what is that? Well, everybody's got lightning. Everybody's got dry seasons. And so you don't have fire departments 200 years ago, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago. You use what they call fire breaks. Now, I know for the general audience, you're like, yeah, Alex, two plus two equals four. I'm talking to the general public who's tuning in for the first time. Because I've got the stacks of articles I'm going to show you saying, Celebrities and firefighters are angry at Trump. They don't quote any real firefighters. They just quote some idiot celebrities. The National Forest Service still puts two-foot-wide spaces every couple hundred yards. They use a plow. And there's famous South African examples where hundreds of millions of acres have been saved by a single road. We can show that photo for TV viewers. Just type in fire break into a search engine, and you'll, you'll get even Wikipedia is, is accurate on this. And it will show you... 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 30 years ago, the National Forestry Service and others saying, if you've got dead brush, pile it up, use it, burn it, use it for nitrogen on your crops, and build fire breaks, humps around your crops or around your house, at least about two feet high and three feet wide. So this was what we had before fire departments. Your TV viewer, plow around to prevent forest fires. See your fire warden, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Forest Service, State Forest Service. And if you drive around anywhere in the country and you see older crops, new crops don't have this, you'll see a hump, a mound about two feet high, three feet wide, all around it. And you're like, why is that around a field? they got a fence outside. What does that keep out? It keeps fire out.
does it keep deer out or bunny rabbits out or skunks out it keeps fire out. and I, I know for rural audiences you're like alex you're talking to us like how we put our socks on hey that's the that's the separation those of us that come from farming and ranching families those of us that come from the land we get all this okay for people that grew up in big high rises they hear trump going they have bad fire mitigation they need to put in uh fire breaks and need to do control burns and they and the media can go look at this crazy kook he's nuts now the media knows he's saying two plus two equals four submarines need doors on them humans breathe oxygen water's wet but that's really the dichotomy of the incredible, invincible ignorance of the leftists and the general public. They're all over Colbert and CNN making fun of the president. Oh, he says, rake the brush. Oh, 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 oh. The aborigines in Australia, the government of Australia, the government of Japan, the government of Indonesia, the government of Russia, the government of China, they all build firebreaks. You go out in the Texas Hill Country, built by Poles and Germans mainly, and every house has a two-foot-tall, three-foot-wide hump of rock. And you go to China, they got the exact same thing because it stops fire when there's a lightning strike at 2 a.m. and you wake up and your house is on fire. You build a fire break, your house doesn't burn down. And look, this is so fundamental. Even the Autobahn Society admits that hundreds of millions of acres have burned down since the policy of no fire breaks. And they came out, the biggest environmental group, and said, we need to build them. Trump, two years ago, got control and said, put fire breaks back in. And the feds have been doing it. The BLM's been doing it. The average BLM employee is absolutely, they have all the equipment. They've been wanting to do it. California, though, said no two years ago. There isn't one fire break, one controlled burn until a, quote, emergency happens. Then they get bulldozers out trying to build one when the fire's coming in 50-mile-an-hour winds, and then firefighters die. And that's what's so frustrating is that even on Infowars.com, I shot a special report about this yesterday, and I showed all the articles, all the documents, all the statements, and I saw half the comments going, oh, shut up, you want to hurt the earth, you kook, you know, blah, blah, when this is a fact. The Earth's always had lightning. It's always had giant fires. Humans learned how to use the fallen wood to cook with or for fertilizer when you burn it. It makes great nitrogen. Every year, I, I, I live here in Texas, every year after the summer, in the fall, we have amazing sunsets, and sometimes you cough because there's so much smoke in the air if the, if, the, if the wind goes north. And that's the Mexicans and the Guatemalans grabbing all the dead wood and all what's left of the corn 90% of it isn't good corn. It's the, it's, it's, it's the leaves and everything. And they hack it all up and they burn it and they spread it over the field, their fertilizer. They don't need to buy fertilizer. And so they get fertilizer. And if there's a lightning strike, imagine if a, if a, if a corn farmer in, say, central Mexico left four feet of corn, just cut the top off the corn, and just left big old dead corn plants out there dry in the sun for months and then lightning strikes what happens to your farmhouse it strikes it burns huge waves of fire grow and then jumps roads everything in your whole area burns. they don't have it, wildfires in mexico folks because they got farmers everywhere that control the land full corporate policy i mean this is a big deal this is the biggest deal you understand this you understand everything to artificially suppress infrastructure that nation states have built that is designed to give the general public wealth and jobs and success. The globalists leave all their dams, all their fields, all their structures alone. But by controlling regulation, they leave your areas open to unfair trade competition, to tornadoes, to fires. This is what they're doing. And this is the big secret, and Trump understands this. From the beginning of recorded history, humans have built fire breaks and had control burns. All U.S. military bases have fire berms built around them. They do control burns to cut the brush back every year. The government until the early 90s in, told the public to do this. They've now removed it. They've put federal and state regulations in in states like California, blocking it. 
And now they wonder why California is going up in flame. It's being done by design, like NAFTA and GATT. And all these deals are meant to sabotage America. China builds a new dam every few months. We haven't had one in decades. China builds three new coal power plants a month. We might get one a year and over a thousand shut down. We are being slated for deindustrialization. This is an admitted plan. Now, let me go to some of these news articles. Because Trump is going out there to California. He's there for the last day. And he is talking about how great our firefighters are and how wonderful the people are standing up and, the, and, and, and getting federal funds in there. And that's good. But the control corporate media is like firefighters and celebrities are mad at him for blaming firefighters. He blamed land management, not the firefighters. Trump dismisses climate change questions about wildfires. I want great climate. As if fires are caused that have always happened by climate change. Change is always happening. The idea is pay the UN carbon taxes and they'll fix it. The idea is that, oh, there's all these fires because of climate change. No, it's because there's always been huge fires until humans cut fire breaks. President Trump's tweet on California wildfires angers firefighter celebrities. Total lie. CNN. Not a surprise. Now, here's the Washington Times. Loggers support Trump's claim that wildfires caused by poor forest management they have the big National Association of Loggers saying that today. But don't, don't believe the Washington Times. Here's even Wikipedia linking through showing the whole history of fire breaks for thousands of years. Just search the term fire break. Here's a, if you're a TV viewer, a South African fire break, again, where the road forms a fire break and saves millions of acres. Get National Fire Service saying build those. But here's where it really gets important. Here's where it really gets important. We've got the San Francisco Chronicle fighting fire with fire, going back over 100 plus years, building fire breaks, using control burns, the only way to stop fire and clearing out the brush and having no problem. And it's a big article and it goes over all the diagrams, all the photos, all the history and what they've done. And now the fact that the fires are exploding because they won't let them do it. Even Autobahn.org, serious leftist environmental group, says, with few options, the BLM is mulling fire breaks to battle sagebrush blazes across the West. Because lightning strikes, catches on fire. If you don't go fire breaks, it grows and grows. It's always happened. So there's control burns and there's fire breaks. So that's the facts. And our president can't even get into a position to point out two plus two equals four, he's bad for saying stop this. He got BLM to stop it two years ago when he got in, but the state of California owns most of the land. Now let's put some diagrams up from 1992, the UN Biological Diversity Treaty that uh, President George Herbert Walker Bush signed on to, but that the Senate never ratified. Let's put that on screen. Half the country's in red, little or no human use. And then once they've done that, we can zoom in there in California and overlay the red area, no human use, to exactly where the national wildfires are happening in California. And by them 30 years ago saying no more controlled burns, no more fire breaks, they even closed old roads and said we're rewilding, let them grow up to get rid of fire breaks. You look at exactly where the UN said under treaty they wanted to get people off the land and you see exactly now where the fires are. Take away the fire breaks, take away land management, you know it'll burn out. And all the homes and towns there will be taken over and then later you can buy them up for nothing. Here is Greg Reese's report on just how serious this is and how suspicious some of this is with evidence of arson. Let's go to that report. At around 9.45 p.m. on Sunday, October 8th of 2017, the Tubbs fire began in Northern California. And by the time the sun came up, over a thousand homes were destroyed. Videos and photographs show how this so-called forest fire seemed to spare the wild and somehow jump from house to house. CNN reported that the so-called forest fire jumped to the freeway 
Hundreds of photographs show cars with melted trails of aluminum alloys from what must have been an unprecedented amount of power. The average forest fire burns at 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit. Aluminum alloys will melt at temperatures between 1,200 and 2,000 degrees, but many of these cars were nowhere near a forest fire. Some cars were flipped over. The heat must have been intense. Not only was it able to melt aluminum alloy, but consistently, every home that caught fire was leveled to white powdery ash in less than 12 hours. By October 31st, the Tubbs fire had destroyed 5,643 buildings. PG&E, Pacific Gas and Electric. PG&E was found responsible for 16 of the fires, over $10 billion in damages. All of this while producing $1 billion a year in profits for the Rothschild Investment Group. PG&E warned the public that the fires will not just continue, but will grow larger every season. They warned their investors that future liability will force PG&E into bankruptcy. In June, utility officials told state lawmakers that they needed protection to survive the coming fire season. And on August 31st, California state legislature passed a utility bailout bill to protect PG&E, its shareholders, and Rothschild investment. At sunrise on Thursday, November 8th, the Camp Fire wildfire began in California. It has all the same anomalies as the Tubbs fire and is already twice as devastating. Many people are asking the same question. Is this an attack? In 2003, Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld and General Richard Myers admit to the development of directed energy weapons and microwave technology. In 2017, Lockheed Martin shoots drones out of the sky with an invisible laser beam that burns them from the inside out. The technology exists, the evidence is there, but the motive? Perhaps it can be found in the United Nations Agenda 21, wherein certain areas of the country are proposed to be off limits to human use. It just so happens that these strange California fires seem to all be within the proposed no human use areas. New regulations and insurance policies are preventing homeowners from rebuilding. And meanwhile, they claim it is the new normal and are now claiming it is a phenomenon of global warming. One thing is for certain, the governor of California has already assured that the people will pay for all of the damages. This is Greg Reese reporting for InfoWars.com. All of recorded history, humans have built little mound walls around their homes, around their crops in case lightning struck and fires came in. Humans learned to fear fire. There's always been giant wildfires, some cases that would burn hundreds of millions of acres, archaeologists have shown. Whole civilizations would be burned down, whole, whole cities. So they would build mounds of dirt, mounds of rock. They would also build areas where they would just use fire in a controlled area to burn away the underbrush. And President Trump has been saying California should do that because 30 years ago, under UN treaty, the U.S. stopped on state and federal land having controlled burns or having fire breaks. They even started closing, you've heard about this, thousands and thousands of roads, millions of miles of roads, which formed fire breaks as well. Many of them were built for that. So I, I'm telling you about something that's like Newtonian physics. I'm telling you about something that just is a fact. In fact, the, the, the original green belts in Austin, Texas, that were built 50, 60 years ago, when my mother was in high school, they had bulldozers and things out in the middle of the hill country back then. Now it's all built up city here in Austin. And they were building fire breaks. So when I go down what they call the Hill of Life off uh, 360 sometimes, it's about, a, you know, three-tenths of a mile down and up, it's this big, wide, 40-foot across. That was a fire break that was built back in the 60s. So here's what's profound. And I spent a lot of time on this day because if people can get this, they can get it all. And there's the Hill of Life in Austin. That is the fire break. That Trump comes out and tells us things that are like telling you put your jacket on when it's 10 below or brush your teeth. And the media goes, he's crazy. He's saying cut brush, cut roads. That would, oh, he's, he thinks roads will fix it. You got to ask yourself, what type of people 
are going against dams and fire breaks and family and free market and things that work. Big global corporations that want you to not have a successful economy and a successful system. So here's the key to everything. I'm going to show it right now. Let's show the United Nations biological diversity maps that were shown to Congress in 1992. They did not pass this, but George Herbert Walker Bush signed on to it. It was still implemented, even though it wasn't ratified. Now, all the areas in red are zero human activity, little to no human use, core reserves, and corridors. Now, let's zoom in for TV viewers on California. The exact map of where the giant fires are in the last few years, where everything's been burned down, notice it's so exact. It's the state and federal land where for 30 years, trees and bushes and tumbleweeds and grass and leaves have been piling up so that when lightning strikes, it creates infernos of 200 foot high fire that jump highways, everything else. So we just, for TV viewer, we just overlaid the UN map of what would be off limits to humans with the map of what the BLM and the state of California have said for 30 years, you cannot cut a fire break, you cannot do a controlled burn, you cannot remove one tree or it's a felony. Like a tree's a bald eagle. Tree falls over, can't harvest it, can't use it. And then you wonder why this has happened. And then you ask the next question, well, what's going on here? Well, actually, I covered my first film in 1997, America's Road by Design. The IMF, the World Bank, they said, all over the world will take away traditional fire breaks and fire management. And then the areas we want will allow fire management in the rest of California and the rest of other Western states. It's all selective. They create the maps. You look at the BLM and the state maps, federal and state maps of California, of where they don't let people burn. And it's all the areas where there's poor people or farmers living, where it'll jump and burn you out. They can buy you up. Take Klamath Falls, Oregon, Northern California. is right on the border there. They had huge mountains there, huge dams built in the 50s and 60s to create reservoirs for that fruit basket uh, and, 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 and all the, the, the vegetables that come out of Northern California, Southern Oregon. Well, what did they do? Well, that biological diversity treaty of 1992 that W's daddy signed on to, Herbert Walker, they laid it all off limits and said a sucker fish in those high lakes was endangered even though it was invasive and was from Asia. How could it be in danger if it was from Asia and isn't? So they wouldn't let the farmers, even though it was full of water up in the high mountain lakes, have the water from the dams for decades till almost all of them, 90 plus percent have moved out. And now the big banks are moving in and buying it up and they're going to have a city there. So they see California as prime area and they've got ways to get rid of farmers. All they do is say, you can't have that high mountain water from the snow runoff we built dams for, it's a fish. They didn't even pick a fish that was endangered. They just said sucker fish. And it's the same thing. They've got computer maps, and they know lightning strikes, and they know there's high winds in California in the high desert, and they say nobody can cut any more fire breaks or clean out brush. It's a felony if you carry out one piece of wood. And then you wonder why the fires get worse and worse and worse. And it's burning down all the houses through that whole corridor. And now the Democrats are announcing a plan to buy up your property for lower than cost, set part of it aside for wild land, which only makes the property they keep even more valuable. You think, oh, oh, how nice they are. They did this in Austin. They took over 500,000 acres from farmers and ranchers that I knew outside Austin 30 years ago. It's part of the reason I got involved politically. First, they'd say you can't use it. They put fines on you. You'd sell for maybe 10 cents on the dollar. They didn't even wait five years. Two, three years later, they took the restrictions off. They built million-dollar, $10 million homes, golf courses all over around Austin. But they took it under the Edwards Aquifer Recharge District. It had nothing to do with water. They took it and they built high-rises on it. But they did it in the name of rewilding. So this is the total issue of a microcosm to give you a window in, and Trump comes along and goes, 
We own hotels in Europe, and they tell us by law we got to put fire breaks and cut the woods back and put berms up, and the military does that, and everybody I know that's a farmer does that, but now there's a law. That's bad management. They go, you crazy person. Nobody, there's no such thing as a fire break. Think about, we can't even have fire breaks except in the rest of California that globalists don't. They got fire breaks. They do that all. It's the areas they don't control. They can selectively say, no fire break, no fire break, no fire break. And you're just thinking, well, that's bad management. That's not bad management. They're going to burn you out. And they just did it. And then Trump shows up and says, we ought to start doing this again. And they act like he's got 12 heads and is molesting babies on the 4th of July. And that, my friends, is the rest of the story. Now, you know Eric Swallowswell out of California has called for total ban on all semi-autos. That's really the big news. Then he said we'll use nukes on people that don't submit. Joe Biggs, who first got in the Twitter argument with him, former Infowars.com reporter, will be joining us next hour. Just be honest, this whole thing was designed to fail from the very beginning. Theresa May never intended to dignify the referendum result. I warned that they were going to stab us all in the back from day one. Theresa May deliberately negotiated a crappy deal, knowing it would be rejected so as to create the pretext for cancelling Brexit. If you enter into a negotiation with no limits on the length to which you'll compromise, that's not a negotiation, that's a capitulation. That surrender from the start. This has been one long process in managed surrender. My right honourable friend, and she is unquestionably honourable, yeah, yeah, yeah. said that we would leave the customs union. Annex 2 says otherwise. <coughs> My right honourable friend said that she would maintain the integrity of the United Kingdom. A whole protocol says otherwise. My right honourable friend said that we would be out of the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice. Article 174 says otherwise. As what my right honourable friend says and what my right honourable friend does no longer match. This is not Brexit. This is a failure of government policy. It needs to be rejected. I mean, for God's sake, her chief negotiator, the guy cutting the deal, Ollie Robbins, was a staunch communist who defended Stalin. What did you expect? Now, Theresa May is threatening no Brexit whatsoever if her sandwich of a deal gets rejected which it will and that was the plan all along i knew this is what would happen because it's a tried and tested eu model give people the illusion of choice the facsimile of democracy let them vote but if their vote defies the eu just sabotage the process or make them vote again and again and again until you get the result you want. Citizens across the continent voted to reject the Maastricht Treaty, to reject the Nice Treaty, to reject the EU Constitution, to reject the Lisbon Treaty, to reject the Euro bailout. Every time the votes were ignored, emphasizing the fundamentally anti-democratic nature of the European Union. We are uh, being asked to sign up to a deal that doesn't really give us Brexit, uh, that portrays the greatest democratic exercise in this country, but I, I have to say, tonight, I'm feeling more optimistic. Um, I'm seeing the resignations. I think we're getting close to the end of the worst and most duplicitous prime minister in British history, and that will give us a chance for a fresh start. This is also about punishing the UK to intimidate other European countries out of pursuing their own form of Brexit. This is nothing less than a complete and total betrayal of democracy. We didn't vote to sign up to everything under a different name and be the EU's bitch. We voted to leave the EU. This deal de facto keeps us in the EU, but with no say and no influence. It turns us into a slave state. And on top of that, we're handing over 39 billion pounds for the privilege. We're the prostitutes in this exchange. We're the ones getting bent over and screwed, yet we're paying them. This deal is so awful that we'd be better off staying in the EU. And that was the plan all along. Now they're going to push for a second referendum, which includes the option of cancelling Brexit. An option that will serve as a death sentence for the very notion of Great Britain as a democratic country. Having stuck in the knife, May and her globalist cabal are now twisting it by putting the country at risk of the chilling prospect of being ruled by Jeremy Corbyn, a terrorist sympathizer who thinks that Venezuela's socialist dystopia is a model for the world. The choice is now clear. 
We stand up for the United Kingdom, the whole of the United Kingdom, the integrity of the United Kingdom, or we vote for a vassal state with the breakup of the United Thank Kingdom. That's the choice. Theresa May never represented the interests of the United Kingdom to begin with. So how on earth is she still in power? This is it. This is our last chance to appoint a leader whose loyalties lie with their country, not with a gaggle of odious technocrats in Brussels. This is the last chance for Britain to avoid disappearing down a hard left hellhole. This is the last chance for Britain to avoid a constitutional crisis. This is... ...come out and said we want to ban all shimmy autos and all over the country. we got a report coming up after Joe Biggs leaves us. The police are saying they don't want to do this. They're being sent to people's houses at 5 a.m., 4 a.m. to confiscate legal guns, and people don't know what's happening. are getting killed, and cops are getting killed. Well, if this really sets off a chain reaction, we're going to have a big problem. I don't want anybody to get killed that's law-abiding. But when tyrants write the laws, I guess tyranny's law, so it's your duty to resist it. We're coming to that point. But Eric Swalswell, or Swalswell, as he's known, he swallows tyranny well or tries to get us to, Joe Biggs tweeted at him when he said, ban all the semi-autos, and he said, hey, we'll nuke your ass. Submit. We are the Borg. Uh, here's uh, Dan Bongino and others covering it on Fox News. Calling for a certain a ban on certain guns. Well, social media erupted in response with one user replying in part. So basically, Congressman Swalwell wants a war because that's what you would get. The congressman responding with a tweet saying it would be a short war, my friend. The government has nukes, too many of them, but they're legit. I'm sure if we talked, we could find common ground to protect our families and communities. I mean, this <laughs> may be the single dumbest tweet uh, in the history of the Twitters. Uh, I mean, who <laughs> tweets this? No less a United States uh, congressman. Now, just some background on this, though, Jedediah. Uh, uh, congressman Swalwell months ago had uh, proposed the idea of legislation to confiscate firearms from legal gun owners to take away weapons uh, and to do it. So there's there's actual a background to this story. So the story came up again, and that's how he got in this back and forth. But uh, I mean, he wants to run for president in 2020. Like, what's his slogan going to be like? Swalwell 2020, we've got the nukes. I mean, this is the <laughs> liberal mindset that we should... Gen so Joe Biggs joins us for the rest of the hour, and we'll cover the waterfront with Joe, military veteran, uh, InfoWars reporter, correspondent. And, and he's, he still corresponds, but he's doing his own thing at americantriggerpullers.com out in florida spending more time with his family which we respect i want to go over the twitter storm against him because hey you don't use nukes on a civilian population uh unless it's a whole country in rebellion you, you know you don't nuke la because there's a million people won't turn their guns in out of six million uh just 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 the arrogance of this guy really blew up at his face you know we had nukes but couldn't beat uh, beat the, the vietnamese in a, in a 15 year war in vietnam there's so many angles to this, but then he tried to walk it back. But to me, Joe, I'm glad you you know engaged him and got him to say this, but really it's the fact that he wants to ban all semi-autos. According to their definition, that's more than half the firearms out there that only kill a few hundred people a year in illegal activity. The media hypes each event, but we're 330 million people. It's still one of the most rare ways to die is to be shot by a semi-automatic rifle. We don't lessen those that are killed, but... Uh, I'm, I'm certainly glad you engaged him on Twitter. You've been really kicking butt on, on Twitter, Joe. Yeah, you know, I've, I've gotten a spats with this guy numerous times on Twitter, uh, arguing over, uh, you know, gun control and things like that before. And Friday, I, I picked up my phone. I was like, I'm going to, you know, cruise through and see what I see on here. And my buddy, John Cardio, he's a reporter uh, out of Florida. He posted this old article that uh, a Swalwell, he did this op-ed and talking about how he wanted to, go in and take guns from people. And I I saw that and my skin started to boil. And my, my blood started boiling. And I got angry and I threw my phone down on the bed and I said, I'm not even going to engage this. And I walked in the living room and I got so mad, I ran back in my room. I grabbed my phone. I was like, you know what? Screw this. I got to talk to this guy. And I just started going off. I was like, man, I was like, if you were to actually do something like this, I mean, you're going to create more problems than the good that you think you're going to get out of it. I said, you would literally cause a war because what you're doing is because you're a person who says you're, you know, you're sworn to uphold the Constitution, and here you are telling me that I can't have something that is my constitutional right. But meanwhile, you'll go to bat for Acosta. It's Acosta's First Amendment right. Donald Trump is violating the Constitution by not allowing Acosta to go and sit in that uh, White House uh, press briefing. But it's okay in the same breath to go, I'm going to take your guns away, and there's nothing you can do about it. 
And if you don't, I'm going to nuke your ass. I mean, that, that's just completely and totally ridiculous, especially coming from a sitting congressman in California. I mean, how does this guy even still have a job? Why aren't people calling for this guy? And not only is he a, a, a congressman, he also plans to run for uh, uh, president in 2020. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Well, you're right, Joe Biggs. And, and you know, people say, oh, he was just joking. No, he went on in more tweets and was like, well, hypothetically, we have more power than you, as if the people are separate from the government, as if... You, you, you know, let's say you nuke, uh, I mean, all the cities in Austin are now blue. Let's say you, 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 you nuke Georgetown, a conservative city north of Austin, because they won't turn their guns in. You radiate thousands of miles around you. Just the idea that he sees the government as separate from the people, and he talk about using a war crime, just illustrates that this ruling class has all these weapons we paid for, and now it's worried about the peace shooters we have. They want total dominance. Well, he told me, he, 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 he finally replies and he goes, well, because we have nukes, there's no way that a bunch of peasants, you know, you know, like regular people, civilians would even think about rising up with guns. And I go, have you even heard of insurgency? Have you seen what's happened in Iraq? Have you seen what's happened in Afghanistan? We have nuclear deterrent, yet it's not stopping people from continuously attacking our troops, continuously getting into, uh, you know, uh, battles and wars all the time on a daily basis. Yeah, bottom line, countries. nuclear weapons are only good for mutually assured destruction or absolute total genocide. And, and look, the Japanese wouldn't give up at the end of World War II. I, I'm not happy about Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but I get we lost 300,000 troops in that fight. And we told them, give up. We have a super weapon. They didn't believe it. We dropped one on them. We dropped another the next day. They finally got it. But that was a tinker toy bomb compared to what they've got now. So here's the left that always says nukes are bad. But now they're foaming at the mouth to use it. Let's look at some of these incredible Twitter responses with former Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs and Infowars.com, former reporter uh, Joe Biggs here. Let's, let's look at some of these. Wow, still can't believe a member of our government said he'd nuke U.S. civilians refusing to hand over the guns. And we've got Colonel Rob Manis, retired, says, well, uh, Ed Swallowswell just disqualified himself from President of the United States, which he wants. In 2020, any elected official that would imply using the United States nuclear weapons against its own citizens to deprive them of their rights is insane. Not to mention, you know, zero about warfare. Yeah, that's not the type of weapon you use for that. And again, it just shows their total ignorance even about how firearms work. Uh, here's what Glenn Greenwald, a real liberal, said. Eric Swalwell is simply an idiot who's built a large-scale media hashtag resistance following by being the member of Congress willing to issue the most inflammatory, reckless, and extreme decrees about Russia and Trump. The easiest way to get noticed uh, by the Dems. And there's a bunch of other ones. If we can pull these up, there's one that shows Vietnamese troops fighting U.S. troops, which I'm not happy about, but but happened. We had nukes and couldn't beat them because we were trying to conquer them. Reminds me of which side of the military we would be on this imaginary war, says Scott Adams. Here it is. The government has nukes. It'll be a short war. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, August 6th, 9th, 45. Vietnam War, November 1st, 55. April 30th, 1975. Years after the United States stated... Uh, that had nukes and more advanced weaponry and still lost the, the Vietnamese farmers because it was their country. And, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that all happened. I'm not siding with them, but that's just the fact. This guy has really jumped the shark, Joe Beggs. Yeah, I mean, I think he's nuked his uh, chances at a, a presidential uh, career in the future, you know, and, and it sparked a big debate again, which is good. It's always good to have these conversations, minus the, uh, the threat of nuclear war by a sitting congressman. But this lady that works for Newsweek, she she texted or uh, tweeted me. She goes, almost every single person I've ever heard of with an AR-15 has been a mass murderer. I mean, that's insane. Like, this is the kind of stuff that the left's spreading about law-abiding gun owners. I, I saw mean, the I'm numbers. Before. They estimate 50 million Americans own a AR-15 M4 variant of some type. And what, we may have like 50 killers? So 50 million are guilty, 60 million are guilty for a few people. Thing. Well, look, how many Islamists drive trucks into people? Shut up, we got nukes, we'll dominate you. So no one cares the Democrats are now more and more admitting they want to ban guns. But the fact that he said use nukes, even Huffington Post, even a bunch of leftist publications, Joe, came to actually your defense and other people's defense and said, yeah, this is pretty fascistic to talk like this. What do you think the mindset is of this guy that, uh, you know, he talks like this? Well, it's pretty horrifying, like I said, when you know that this guy is, you know, looking to run to be president in 2020. You know, it's horrifying that to think that a guy could run for the highest office 
and have that type of mindset to be so anti-American, to be so uh, anti-Constitution and, and would want to take those rights away from people and, and, and try to put police and military in these uh, predicaments where they have to go do things like that. You know, thankfully, I know most police officers or most uh, military would never uh, go along with something like that, but you would always still have some, you know, some turncoats. But it, it's just frightening to think that a guy like that that could reach that, you know, potential high office has that type of mindset when dealing um, with that. He, he goes, you know, he says, if you're a good law-abiding citizen, Joe, you would just give them over. You would do the right thing. You wouldn't fight back. And I go, well, that's my right. So, yes, I would And again, fight you can't be trusted with a firearm, but he can be trusted with nukes he wants to use on you. Like, do people get the separation of power here? I don't know, man. This guy is a uh, few far and beyond. He doesn't make any sense. I mean, that's that probably goes down in history as one of the dumbest things a politician is, uh, has definitely ever said on Twitter. Uh, we'll put that. Um, but it's just frightening. And you're seeing the shift with the left. I mean, we saw after the Parkland uh, shootings here in Florida, um, you saw those kids come out on that stage and they said, you know what? They say that we're going to take guns. You know, you give us an inch, we're going to take a mile. We're going to take the guns. And now you see these politicians, these left-wing politicians, who are kind of trying to shift what they believe and their target audience, which are these kids that are starting to go far, far more left than Stalin. And uh, they are starting to use that rhetoric now. Instead of saying, oh, we don't want to ban your guns, they're coming out and saying it. We will take your guns, and we will use force if necessary. And if you fight back, we're going to nuke you. That's just, it's insane. Well, that's what's crazy is I remember reading Democratic Party documents, CFR documents, saying once we register, then we'll ban, we'll do it incrementally, but we got to keep it secret. And now they're just in the Boston Globe. It's time to get rid of the Declaration of Independence. It's time to get rid of the First Amendment. It's time to get rid of the Second Amendment. It's time to disarm. You know, it's time to just arrest conservatives. These people, I don't want the Democrats to be villains. I don't want it. I'm not even a Republican. I'm just a patriot. What, what has happened to them, Joe? It seems like they've radicalized. Because I remember you were here like six years ago, started working in InfoWars. And you come back from Iraq and all the rest of it. And, and I remember back then you even thought like I was a little extreme maybe. Okay, it's not that bad. And then later you got more radical than I was, if, if, if my memory serves. But what is the problem? Because now this stuff's so radical. It's like Antifa's at Tucker Carlson's house saying, we know where you live. We're going to get your kids. And then CNN defends it. I mean, at a certain point, it's like, what well, the hell so, is going on here? It's getting so hostile, it's forcing both sides to kind of become radicalized in a sense. You know, you've got the right going far right, and you've got the left going far left, and the people in the middle are getting trampled over. You know, it, it's almost like you've got to either stick your guns, you've got to be a hardcore constitutionalist, you've got to stand up for your First Amendment rights regardless, your, your guns, everything that you want. And if you don't, you know, you, you're, you're just a, you know, a centrist guy. You're nothing. You're, you're crap. Your joke, you can't make up your mind. And then well, let me the ask you this. Left. Let me ask you this. I mean, I know you, you're a guy that loves people black, white, brown, you name it. The media, the leftist media is like everywhere. I've got a report on Infowars.com where they're teaching kids in school that whites at public schools are inherently bad. Uh, it, it's all over the news. They're, they're trying to create a race war. And it's so incredibly sad to see everything Martin Luther King and others work for being betrayed. Why do you think the left is going with this agenda? Because we're not about race-based politics. We're about freedom-based and ideas and free market unifying us. But the left is going with classical cultural Marxism, and it's just so nasty. Yeah, I think it's going to get bad, I'd say, in about 10 years. Right now, we think it's bad. But like you said, this indoctrination, the stuff that they're teaching our kids, you know, the things that my daughter, when she's old enough to go into school here pretty soon, is going to start, they're going to start teaching these crazy things. And, you know, it's going to be uh, one of those things at home where you got to sit down and you got to reverse engineer this crap that they're trying to teach you or to teach your kids and stuff. And, I mean, I saw that video that Paul Joseph Watson did about that where they were teaching these kids that, you know, white people are bad. That's horrible. And that's why I'm saying in about 10, 15 years, this is when we're really going to see a lot of clashes and a lot of uh, a, just a lot of all-out. Well, all that's it. I mean, the left, the like left has tested and tested and we've put up with it. So now... They talk about the KKK. That's a bunch of losers. This is real powerful groups in public schools on YouTube. They're teaching this type of stuff, and it's just, it's just disgusting. Uh, uh, and, and so, so, Joe, you know, we talk about fifteen years, ten years from now. 
when we talk about fighting it and telling our kids this is wrong, and I'm the same way. I'm busy, and my kids pick this stuff up. Even though I'm Alex Jones, they still pick up the BS. So I'm not on, like high and mighty here going, hey, we have to dip it in the bud. But what about what Lou Dobbs talked about a few weeks ago that almost got him banned? Hey, the U.N. gets State Department money to fund these migrant hordes. Cut the funding. Or, hey, cut the funding to schools that teach this. Instead of fighting the propaganda, how about we say as taxpayers, you don't get the funding to do all this crap? I think that's the answer. Yeah, it's a good way. You cut the money off, and then they can't do that. They can't continue to grow, and they can't continue to push out that propaganda and that left-wing uh, extreme rhetoric that they're doing. You know, it, it, it's, it's intense now. I mean, here, I used to live in Florida. I joined the Army in Florida in 2003, and this is really my first time back in, you know, a long time. And boy, has Florida changed. I mean, this used to be a pretty red state. I mean, it's, it's on that purple scale right now. You know, it, it's hard to walk out in public, even with political shirts on, without people wanting to jump down your throat and scream and become, uh, you know, physically. It's the bullying. The left is like we're in Cuba. They just, they think like you're not allowed to be wearing a pro-gun shirt. And, and, and so now I catch myself doing it every day. I didn't used to, but now I'm going to. Yeah, it, it's insane. I mean, I like I last night, I, I, decided, I decided to test the waters and I wore one of my shirts that says, make Democrats cry again. And this guy goes, what does that mean? What does that mean? Does that mean that you like Trump? Do you think that it's funny that he's destroying our country? I go, destroying our country, we have a booming economy, um, unemployment, you know, through the roof. I mean, we're, we're doing so good right now. Well, they're uh, the ones that a, want to destroy it. Th these are conquerors. And those that are with them are camp followers who are, look, it, it, it's true, Joe. Democrats are not Americans. America's never been great. It'll never be that great. Cuomo, they literally have signed on to globalism and we want to go, oh, free market, open ideas, free speech. Hey, they have their free speech, but they're not Americans. When I say that, folks, that's so profound. Dianne Feinstein and Michael Moore aren't Americans. They're globalists. Obama hates America. And then I look at what they're currently doing and how our own media sides with communist China against America. And I look at how the left, when you tune into what they're writing or saying in public schools or college, it is the most Nazi. They call us Nazis all day. And I thought, that's dumb. They call us Nazis. They know that's not true. That's because they're the Nazis. I mean, I have a longtime family friend going back to when I was a little kid. My, my best friend died about 10 years ago, but my best friend's mom a big family friend on all these trips with us. And one of her granddaughters was you know, part African-American or whatever, and I'm good friends with her. And she went to Southwest Texas University the last few years. She's graduating right now. And they literally come into class and say, Alex Jones is a white supremacist. And Alex Jones is a Nazi. And Alex Jones is fake news. And she's known me her whole life. And camped out with me and been on boats with me and eating dinner with me probably 50 times. And she got pissed. And they said, listen, you shut your ass up. You get your lose your degree. Well, that took her from being a liberal for the good things liberals claim to absolutely being against them. I'm not going to say her name. She's a beautiful young woman. But that's the thing. She's like, I know Alex Jones. That professor said, a white woman, you shut your ass up right now. He's a Nazi. She said, no, he's not. What you just said about him is a lie. And that's why they want to censor us and silence us so they can say whatever they want about us and not be challenged. You know, Joe Biggs, taking our guns is a big deal because slaves are disarmed. And <clears throat> it's always the sign of what we're going to ask, but the taking of the First Amendment and the way they've targeted conservatives and nationalists that, 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 that becomes a campaign contribution of the Democrats. This is the only reason the Republicans didn't keep the House. They kept the Senate, which is historic. And we have to take action. And that's our biggest deficit is the average Republican doesn't know how this cyber stuff works. They won't even take Republican ads on Facebook or Twitter, on most of them, for Congress people. But they'll take Democrats. The fact that they let them do that is... Total discrimination. They go, oh, it's a private company. So newspapers won't take Republican ads either? Or if you're black, you can't rent a hotel room? This is so fundamental 
and we've been free so long, the average conservative wants to play the part of kind of like we're the establishment. We're not. We're the underdog. We better start acting like it, Joe. Yeah, I mean, you got to look at the entire political spectrum right now. It's all changed after we elected Trump. I mean, you know, the typical boring, total line, you know, Christian, I'm married and I have a wife, you know, and I've got a dog and three kids and I was a vet. Like that same kind of mentality these politicians use in all their videos doesn't work anymore. You know, you, I, you know, people on the right need to realize that it's all shifting and changing. And if you really want to reach some of these younger people that are in college right now and they're being brainwashed to go left and there's many of them that are starting to think for themselves and they're going, I want to go right, but it looks boring. I mean, Republicans at the end of the day are milk toast most of the time. They're so boring. But you see a guy like Trump, man, he's so different. He's so energetic. A friend of mine the other because day Because he's a populist. He goes, he's not, I don't know exactly. There's nothing more boring than liberals obsessed with what Halloween costume you're wearing. Why are we letting them be the cool people? They're not. They're super uncool. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we need to really rethink our approach to politics. We need to really rethink our approach to how we push out our messages as conservatives, as Republicans, as right-wingers, whatever you are. Um, we've really got to change that narrative, and we need to come out there attacking hard. I mean, look at Brian Kemp's uh, ads. He, his was the only right-wing person that I saw, the guy that ran for governor in Georgia and finally won. Um, his ads were amazing. They were hilarious. You could relate to it. At the end of the day, I mean, I thought about the ad throughout the day, and I live in Florida, and I'm thinking about you know, this guy that's running for governor in Georgia because his ads really hit home. You know, he's like, yeah, I got a gun because when my daughter starts dating, I want to make sure that there's a good guy coming around. Or I drive a truck because, I, at least, uh, you know, in case I come up around, a, you know, a bunch of migrants that are illegals, I can take them to the Border Patrol station and have them deported or whatever like that. You know, he's using these current events. He took the like fake that. political correctness that well, obviously we're not doing that and made it a joke. Yeah, exactly. And that's good. And that's what people on the right are going to have to start doing. Everyone's like, we have to be in the high ground. We have to take the high ground. Well, there's a war going on. There's people in the trenches. And the only ones that are coming out right now, the ones that are you know, taking control, are the ones willing to get down there and get dirty. No, I totally agree. The, the whole know. blue blood thing, which was why I, I, I used to be neutral politically. The Republican blue bloods are the nastiest, dumb, and talk about, they're beyond racist. If you don't yeah. know their granddaddy's granddaddy, you aren't in the club. They're, they're classist. And that's not what America is about. Well, Joe, the people just joined us. In the last few minutes we've got left for you in this segment, I got some big news coming up next segment. You challenged Eric Swallowswell, and he said, I'll nuke your ass if you don't turn your guns in. This is one of the defining moments in America. There's a lot of stuff out there, but I agree. This is one of the dumbest tweets ever. This has really gone viral. So I congratulate you on, on reaching out to him and getting him to arrogantly say that. What do you think chapter two is of this? Well, I'm actually trying to reach out to him and see if he'll have a sit down and talk. Uh, I'd like to really pick his brain and wonder why, or kind of get to understand why he thinks that that's a, uh, you know, a correct response uh, to this and really find out if he truly does believe in the Constitution, if it's something he's really going to uphold, or is he just going to be a radical uh, new leftist that's going to come in and try to reshape what this great country was founded and on? And by I mean, the way... He for those that just tuned in, he, he says he'll use nuclear weapons on those that don't turn their guns in, which militarily, all of it's pure bull. But he say, oh, it's a joke. No, it's not a joke. It's about they've got the weapons. We don't. It illustrates everything. This is totally crystal clear. Yeah, it, it, it's just it, it's something that needs to be talked about. And a guy like that, quite frankly, shouldn't even have the job that he has right now making a statement like that. Think about if Donald Trump said that. If Donald Trump even joked about using nuclear weapons against dissidents, against people who didn't like him, against fake news, he would, as soon as they took control of the House, he'd be gone. You know, they'd be like, impeach, 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 and it'd be done. It wouldn't be one of those things that's kind of on the back burner where they're scared to do it, you know, and, and that's just that double standard that we see continuing to happen between the left and the right. If you're in the left, you can beat your wife, you can be a rapist, you can, you can you know, collude with Russia, you can illegally spy on American citizens. That's okay. But if you're on the right and you do anything at all, you're guilty uh, without, you know, having your time in court. Um, and, and it's just ridiculous. You lose your job. You lose your TV show. You can lose everything. You know, your, your social well, that's media that's it. I mean, they're telling everybody, join us. Don't have Alex Jones on. Don't have Joe Biggs on. Don't talk about Trump being good or we'll attack you. This is pure bullying. 
and Americans have their line in the sand. They should say no to it. AmericanTriggerPullers.com. Joe Biggs, uh, how do folks find you on Twitter? Uh, at Rambo Biggs, R-A-M-B-O-B-I-G-G-S. All right, great job. Thanks for spending so much time with us, and uh, really great to see you to get Swallows well, Eric Swallows well, to come out and say, we're going to take your guns, resistance is futile, turn them in and we're going to nuke you. What an incredible moment. Thanks, Joe. Got a beard now. <laughs> you like my beard? Yeah. I you know, take mine off and you grow one. <laughs> no, my son, you know, Rex, he, we were in Hawaii yeah. like eight months ago, and he goes, Dad, he goes, can you grow a beard? And I said, yeah, son, I'll grow a beard. So he said, grow a beard. And, and now <laughs> I got a wife. I love her. But you know, the ladies like it so much, I can't stop. <laughs> so, see, at least the public's now listening. Here's the thing. I'm not a person that thinks of my competition in how much money I've got or how big a string of women I got. Doesn't mean I don't like money. Doesn't mean I don't like women. But it's an intellectual endeavor. And my greatest frustration is that I really care about humanity. I really care about our future. I really can see the potentiality of our larger destiny. And I've seen the fallen, twisted servants of evil come after me and try to shut us down because we have the cure to their disease. And I don't sit back when I'm driving home at night and think, man, you're really a badass. You know, you, you, you've got David Rockefeller's organizations and Henry Kissinger's organizations and the Clintons and the EU all after you. I actually sit back and go, my God, isn't this choice really easy? How am I one of the prime movers in the resistance against this? So here's the big secret. I'm not up here saying these things on air, trying to impress you. I'm not up here saying these things proudly like, wow, I've got kryptonite to the globalists. I'm actually pretty upset because I'm projecting onto you that you are just like me. The globalists have bet and said, you're not. You're dumb. You're stupid. You're backstabbing. You want your 30 pieces of silver. You don't want the universe. You're going to sell out here now at this level and never go forward. Well, a lot of you may do that, but I'm looking for the people that aren't. And it doesn't mean I've got all the answers and that I'm your guru. There are no gurus. All there are cults. The priest class setting itself in front of your relationship with God and your creator. So I'll say this as clear as I've ever said it to everybody out there watching and listening. There is a war on for your soul and your consciousness. And that doesn't mean we're going to toddle into the nearest church and find God there. In fact, most of the time, you're going to find the devil because the devil puts himself in front of the gate to get to the universe and God. And all the symbols you see, the, the all-seeing eye and everything else, the rising sun, oh, those are the devil's sign. No, they're not. God created mathematics. God created everything. The devil has seized control of all the symbols to make you think that the devil is God. The devil is not God. So, there are people who are missing a connection to God, who are seeking to suppress your consciousness and your mind so that they can rule over you. And that's a fact. No one can deny that. And for me, it's a very frustrating fact that there are these horrible world government forces that are doing everything they can to suppress knowledge and technological development and honorableness and goodness and healthiness. Because 
At this point in culture, if people pushed healthiness and goodness and family and God and Christ, we would already be next galaxy over. It'd be over. And there's a real force spiritually, intergalactically, interdimensionally, however you quantify that, that is doing everything it can in its crib to strangle humanity and to mutate humanity and to whisper in our ear and, 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 and kill our own instinct to want to be with God. And so I'm not pleased that I am the vanguard, that my crew is the vanguard, that our audience is the vanguard of the resistance. This is so on its face, prima facie, easy to accept, easy to know, easy to go with. God's already got it all planned out. We just have to go with free will and choose God's plan. And so that's why I'm really frustrated is because there really isn't a choice here. There's oblivion and death or there's eternal life. God's created a stairway to heaven through free will, but you aren't going to be let into the next dimension unless you've chosen to not be a horrible, deceitful, manipulative devil. So a lot of people kind of rise up in their awareness and they figure out there's a scam going on and people are being manipulated and they go, oh, great, this is great. If I dumb these people down, if I screw them over, I'm ascendant. No, you're lower than they are. You're winning in a fallen system. So if you sit back and you look at why is InfoWars so banned? Why is it so hated? It's the same reason Trump is hated and defiled. Because Trump doesn't want to see the world burn so that he can sit on top of the ashes and feel powerful. Trump feels better and more successful when things are successful, when things are beautiful, when things are strong. And those that don't think they can meet that mark, they're fundamentally against that. And that's when you realize the fallen only can pull down the universe. They don't have the idea of expanding it because that's very scary to lower intellects, to see other people informed, to see other people racing ahead, to see other people having great experiences. They are cut off from that consciousness. And so to them, it's like death. So in the two minutes and 20 seconds we have left, I just want to let the listeners know that you've done an amazing job supporting InfoWars. And our affiliates have, and, and, and so has the crew. But I don't want to make it about InfoWars in the final equation. I want to make it about the fact that in a world of 7 billion plus people, you found InfoWars. And you resonated with InfoWars. And not because InfoWars was the highest level of human outreach, but because all of us together were looking for a better world and trying to be good and coming together. And it's that idea of us communicating, of us having community, of us having brethren, of us having kinship, of us communicating, of us edifying each other, of us coming together and even having a chance to communicate, that is the ultimate sin of the globalist. And that, when you read their writings, and their leaked documents, they say we can't let them have comment sections on articles. They're communicating, they're, they're getting reinforcement, they're, 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 they're getting stronger, we, we, we have to suppress that. But even if you're in a jail cell alone, and you know God, and you know justice, you're already connected to the universe. These controllers don't have anything over you. They're not the elite. They're the fallen people. And we're sad they won't join us, but we can't let them suppress us. We can't let them stand against what we're doing. We can't let them hurt the innocents anymore. And these young souls that are so ready to be part of infinity with us. And so 
It's all a big joke on the other side. They kill these bodies.